our, our goal is about six to 800 for Rwanda. So uh, no, I mean, we, we still have a long way to go. The, 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 the biggest hurdle was uh, the hardware development. Hardware is totally different than software. You know, you can't just have what they call a, a minimum valuable product, just launch it and, and improve as you go. Hardware is different. You have to have a product that is fully working, safe to the end user or whoever is going to be using it, well tested before you launch it um, on the ground. So for the last kiosk, it took about two years to develop it. So that was, those, those, those are called them development gaps. Uh, stop us from expanding as we want to. But it's, it's part of doing business. Um, the reason why I like this hardware software combination is it, it separates us from our competitors. So it, it gives us an edge. But we're not where we want to be, definitely not. We have kiosks in refugee camps. We have kiosks in rural area where there's no electricity. We have kiosks in Yamagoga where there is electricity. Uh, our, our product and services is a convenient, what we call convenient, uh, product or services. Meaning somebody, even though there's electricity or not, you can't go to a marketplace and charge your phone outside. There's no, there's no place for you to plug in and charge. Plus most people don't carry their charger with them. So they come to our kiosk because they're either running out of battery uh, juice uh, and most of the people in those areas, they, they're in those areas all day, especially with smartphones. Uh, you need to charge those smartphones several times a day. So we are convenient products. So whether there's electricity or not, for example, you know, you go to airports in, in Europe or in the States, you have charging uh, ports because they understand that customer needs uh, to charge their phone. It's the same thing. So it has nothing to do with it, access to electricity. It has, to, it has at least our business. Of course, access to electricity is very important. Uh, and we start seeing to be more important as the smartphone um, start increasing the amount of smartphone. We have about 20-25% uh, smartphone penetration in East Africa and they're talking about reaching to 70-80% to in the next few years. So that, the, you know, the smartphone will consume even more uh, energy. So it's definitely important but we want to focus on bringing convenient services to the end user. That's our goal and it does not matter if there's electricity or not. Other than South Africa, large industrial manufacturing is practically non-existent on the continent. And the lack of a developed manufacturing industry has pushed developers to make their products overseas and this has cost them a lot in return. So cost of production is always a challenge. I mean, um, especially when you deal with hardware. So we had to go overseas to develop this technology. And uh, unfortunately, we couldn't develop this technology on the continent. It's not just a Rwandan problem, it's an African problem. There is no hardware development solution, at least not of yet. There is some companies trying to do it, but it's not there yet. Um, but what we are as ARED, we are hardware as a service platform. What it means is we develop this hardware to provide services. So our core business is not the hardware itself, it's the services that we provide on this kiosk. So it is what we call recurring revenue. Uh, and that's the business I like to be in. Um, hardware itself, then you have to depend on selling this kiosk uh, to generate revenue. So we don't sell the kiosk, we generate revenue on the services. But we designed the new kiosk to be able to be manufactured in Africa. So most of the country we go in, we look for manufacturing company that can develop or manufacture at least part of those components. Because the way the kiosk was developed is, is modular. So it can be breaking apart in different components. Uh, we know we're not going to be able to manufacture everything. Like solar panels right now, we're talking to a company in Tunisia. Uh, the frame, we know we can do it uh, in, in the region. Uh, so some of the, we want to minimize the import. But it's still, you know, it's still challenging. And, and the problem is people think, okay, manufacturing in Africa is cheaper. It's actually not cheaper. You know, uh, most manufacturing companies want to have bulk orders. So they don't, they not cater to the SME, to the small companies. So the only uh, country I've seen that is really adapt to any size of order is China. You know, we're not there yet. You know, if you go to a manufacturing company and you tell them you need 30 or 50, they don't even talk to you. In China, they don't care. You know, they'll work with you because they understand business. So we still have this mindset we need to, to fix. But, you know, eventually in the future, 
you want to manufacture most of their kiosk. Uh, I won't say locally in Rwanda, but at least regionally uh, on the continent. Access to markets is still highlighted as a big challenge that's affecting growth of many small and medium enterprises due to regulations, border processing, and market fragmentation. And this does not only threaten their survival, but also affect their decisions. I built this company for expansion. I didn't just build it for Rwanda. Um, obviously, Rwanda is a small market. Uh, the need is there all across Africa. Um, the, the challenge now is how do you expand? Because expansion is, is nice, but the problem in Africa is the markets are so fragmented. Even in this East African block we're talking about, you bring a product here, you want to bring it to Uganda, for example, you still have to go through hurdles at the border uh, to, you know, to bring that product there. So it's a fragmented uh, marketplace, Africa as a whole. So you have to have, a, have an innovative uh, expansion approach. So we develop what we call a master franchise business model. So we work with partners in all those countries we go in and we license the technology and we have what we call a revenue sharing structure with those. But obviously uh, my goal is 20 countries in the next 10 years. So that's ultimately what we want to have around 50 to 100,000 kiosks uh, in those countries. I mean we, we're looking at Nigeria as the next country and that country alone can hold about 30 to 50,000 kiosks. So the opportunity is there, but you